video is sponsored by mpb.com. Well, hello everybody, and uh, welcome to the beautiful Kynance Cove here in Cornwall. It's very pretty here. Uh, I was last here last year with Emily and Noah, and uh, Noah was only about nine weeks old then. And it was very windy, so boy did good. Anyway, today I'm shooting with uh, the Leica M11, and I'm gonna share my thoughts on this camera. And as you might know if you've watched other videos, uh, I've been so impressed with this camera in some ways that uh, I've decided to convert all my other cameras to Leicas. Um, that was a bad joke when I first started it a few weeks ago, and I'm, I'm carrying it on, so I should probably just just get rid. Anyway, yes, I'm a big fan of this camera, despite all the reasons that lots of people aren't a fan of it. Now, if you don't know anything about this camera, basically, it costs seven and a half thousand pounds, other currencies here. It has no IBIS, no autofocus, no tilty flippy screen, no official weather sealing, no EVF, no video features to speak of at all. And uh, there's probably lots of other stuff that I'm missing, that this camera is missing. But in a lot of ways, that's why I wanted to try it. Because as you might know, if you watched the video a couple of months ago, I've become a bit sick of just how much technology sits within a lot of modern cameras. And this, this felt like a, I don't know, a refreshing departure from that. But um, I have some thoughts on it. And today I thought I'd share those thoughts. It's the, the plan. Before I start, though, I should probably make my hat look like all other Leica owners. I don't know why they do this. I assume it's so that it can hear the compliments. Let's go and find some oat milk. Oh, by the way, I can't remember if I've said this in other videos from this trip so far, but uh, we're staying in St. Ives, which is very nice. And I've been on some little excursions with the M11, doing some street type photography. So I'll, uh, I'll intersperse this video with little clips and photos from, from those. I thought I'd let you know because uh, it might look a bit odd, me shooting here one minute and then the next minute me showing you some footage and a photo of, I don't know, a seagull on a bin, for instance. But now you know, so yeah. Definitely feels like a natural home for the M11 on the streets. Not that it can't do this stuff, but uh, yeah, feels more natural shooting with it in a town, for instance. We've, uh, we've had a bit of a shocker here, to be honest. We've, uh, we've done what you should do when you come to Kynance Cove, which is check that there's a low tide. And there is a low tide, but it's not particularly low, which means that all these little inlets and caves that we wanted to explore, as I did last year, uh, I'm not sure we're gonna be able to do because the tide is actually coming in at quite a rate and never got low enough for us to be able to do that. So that's annoying. Sunglasses would have been good. Although it could be worse. I could be like Mass who forgot to bring his camera from the car. <laughs> uh, now the first thing we should probably talk about when it comes to this camera and all Leicas is cost. Because uh, well, that is what people think about when they think about Leicas. That and Leica colors, which we shall get onto. Now most of me thinks that this camera is an absolutely terrible deal given how much it costs and the lack of features that you get with it. However, there is also a part of me, a big part of me, that doesn't mind paying a premium for products that have been made really well and uh, made to stand the test of time. And if you look back at the history of Leicas, typically they do last quite a long time. I mean, there are lots and lots of people shooting with lots of Leica cameras that are decades old. And they're made in Germany, that's not a cheap process, and I assume that people who make them are paid properly, which isn't always the case in the electronics industry. Now, of course, that's not only the case in the electronics industry. 
coffee for instance, all the way through the coffee making process, most of the people involved in that process, it's certainly my understanding, that most of them are not paid well, even though coffee is getting more and more expensive. And so I have no problem really with things costing a lot of money if the uh, production has been entirely ethical. However, you do still have to ask if a camera like this, which has got basically, I think, the same sensor as my Sony slash Leica A7R Mark IV, without any of the other features really, you do have to ask if it's worth more than double the cost. And I don't know that it is. <laughs> However, to find out for sure, we shall try and take some more photos. It's getting very bright. I, uh, I'll tell you what has been quite nice about shooting with this camera, actually. Manual focus uh, in a way that's different to what I expected. See, I wanted to try this camera because I thought the challenge of manual focus would make me feel more involved in the process, basically. And it turns out that a lot of the time, particularly in places like this, it's easier than autofocus. So basically, if you know your hyperfocal distances, you don't really need to do anything in a place like this because at 50 millimeters, at f8, I know that everything past 10 meters will be in focus. So uh, all you basically need to do is focus at infinity and uh, you're sweet in places like this. Now it's a little bit different when you're shooting somewhere like St. Ives, you do need to be constantly adjusting the focus. And uh, that is actually quite a nice process because on these little lenses, the focus throws are tiny. And depending on the lens, sometimes they're a quarter turn, sometimes they're half a turn, but it's a completely different experience than uh, manual focusing on say a Sony Leica. When you've got a focus by wire lens and it just feels like you're constantly turning it. And uh, I have enjoyed that. I've just been surprised that uh, I haven't needed to do it more really. Nice wave. Yeah, I kind of expected to miss a lot of shots because of uh, manual focus and it turns out I think I've got more shots as a result of manual focus and that that has been a bit of a lesson. Light's getting kind of harsh now. Uh, sorry for the interruption as has become the norm in these videos but I thought I'd tell you that uh, I remembered you actually don't need to know your hyperfocal distances because all the information you need about focusing distances is actually on the lenses, which uh, is pretty handy. Now, if you've never focused a rangefinder camera before, uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's not straightforward to film, but basically there's a box uh, in the middle of what you see through the viewfinder and uh, there are two little images in that box and your job is to turn the focus barrel until you see those two images become one. And uh, that is when your subject is in focus. Uh, pretty straightforward, ultimately, I've found, unless you're using a really wide aperture and trying to photograph like a, a running child, for instance, then, then it's really tricky. You need a lot of practice for that, much more practice than I've had. They're back here. Oh yeah, that is nice. Well, I'm finding being up here a bit of a strange experience. Half of me feels very relaxed watching the waves roll in and the other half is absolutely terrified that I'm about to fall off this cliff. Hence my position. Uh, anyway, let's talk about color to take my mind off it. Uh, Leica, as far as I can tell, is uh, famous for its colors. Lots of people absolutely love its color science, I suppose you'd call it. Uh, I find that the DNGs that come out of this camera, and don't get me wrong, DNGs coming out of the camera is a fantastic thing, but I find them really punchy and really contrasty. And uh, for me, the whole point of a raw file is that it's super flat and then you can mold it into whatever you want it to be. And I find that a little bit more tricky with these files because as I say, they're so punchy. Now that can either be a positive or a negative. If you're the sort of photographer who doesn't really like to do all that much editing and you like how Leica does things, you will love it. If like me, you enjoy the Sony slash Leica because uh, it gives you a really flat file, then this is, well, a bit frustrating, I find. And I wish they gave you the option to have a super flat file out of the camera. It'd be much better, but I suppose you can just do a bit more editing to solve it. In theory, it should have the same dynamic range and stuff, so it's just that the file looks different when you get it out of the camera. But yeah, in short, like the colors, if this is what they are, I'm not the biggest fan of them. I appreciate that'll be a very controversial thing to say. Uh, I'm not enjoying this. 
What other things can I talk about to take my mind off the height? Uh, turns out that uh, while I was on top of a cliff fearing for my life, I couldn't think of anything else to say. But uh, since coming home, I have. And uh, let's talk about image stabilization or the lack of it in this camera. Now, if you look at the history of M cameras, uh, they're clearly designed to be held and used out in the field, shooting fairly dynamic subjects, street photography, stuff that's moving, basically. And uh, as a result, I would wager that most photos that have ever been taken with an M series camera have uh, used a fairly high shutter speed because of that. And I imagine that's what Leica were thinking when they thought, oh, there's no point putting image stabilization in a camera like this because uh, people are typically gonna be using fast shutter speeds. Uh, and therefore, to an extent, I'm inclined to agree that cameras like this don't need image stabilization because of the shooting situations that you're most likely to use them in. However, when you have a body or a sensor that has a resolution of 60 megapixels, I think image stabilization is a must to make sure that you gather all of that resolution. And there's no getting around the fact that this camera has limited use cases because it doesn't have image stabilization. I mean, ultimately, when the light gets bad, there's no point using this camera because immediately you have to up the ISO. And if you do that, then you lose dynamic range and you might as well be using a smaller, less capable sensor. Although, of course, if you're still shooting stuff that requires a high shutter speed at night, you'd have to do that anyway. Anyway, in short, uh, I'm aware that I'm not being very short with this, but in short, I think image stabilization or the lack of it is the biggest thing that would stop me from buying this camera. Uh, if I was to buy this camera and a couple of lenses, it would be clearly a big investment and therefore I'd want to be using it a lot. And uh, the lack of image stabilization is probably the biggest reason that I wouldn't be using this camera a lot. Um, the autofocus or the lack of autofocus, don't mind at all. But yeah, the lack of image stabilization, I really do. Uh, what else is there I was gonna talk about? I've written some notes. Can't take straight photos. Yes, you might remember uh, a while ago, I made a video about my Ricoh, my tiny little Ricoh GR, and I was talking about how I couldn't take straight photos with that camera for some reason. Turns out, I think it's probably more user error than the camera because I can't do it with this either. Basically, if I'm shooting with a camera without an EVF that's got the um, leveler, what's it called? It's not spirit level. You know what I mean? Turns out I'm completely reliant on that. Even as someone who has uh, made their living from photos for, for years now, I need it. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the rangefinder I actually found really cool for uh, shooting things like birds. And the reason for that is that with a 50 millimeter lens, uh, you can actually see a lot of stuff that's sort of outside the frame lines of 50 millimeters. So you can see when a bird, for instance, is about to fly into the frame and therefore you can kind of get a gauge on when you need to be shooting. Typically with a normal EVF, you can't see anything outside the frame. And uh, I found it useful to be able to. It was a, a quite a unique shooting experience for me and I really enjoyed it. Uh, oh yeah, the cost of me saying that Leicas last for a long time, my concern would be that the Leicas I'm referencing are film cameras with very limited electronics. This is obviously full of electronics and I don't know that electronics are all that good at lasting for decades. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons to buy a Leica is that it lasts a long, long time. Do the digital ones last a long time though? I don't know. Oh, and the other thing I found by accident really is that uh, it requires two hands to operate the camera. Quite obvious because you have to manual focus with the lens, but I didn't really think about that previously. Sometimes when I'm out shooting on the street, I'll just use one hand and I'll auto focus and that'll be great. I'll be able to walk around with a coffee, for instance. Uh, with this camera, you can't. And in fact, you can't even use the, uh, the ISO dial with just one hand because you need to sort of lift it up and then spin it. I find this dial useless, if I'm being completely honest. Seems like a very strange design. So I'll just leave it in auto. Uh, yeah, I think that's all my points. I really, really like this camera, but uh, I don't think I'd use it enough to justify the purchase. I think what's much more likely is that at some point I get a much older Leica, maybe with one lens, and I use it every now and again, just as a, a treat or something a bit different to shoot with. But uh, if I bought this, it'd have to be one of my main cameras and uh, I just don't see it, I don't think. Which is a shame because I do think it's really cool. Even if I do get the sense that it's definitely most at home shooting sort of designer dogs. Taking pictures of designer dogs, you understand. Also, I'm all for USB charging, but why have they put it there? That makes absolutely no sense to me. No idea. 
Anyway, thank you very much for watching and thank you to mpb.com for lending me this camera and for sponsoring this video. Now, if you're in the market for uh, perhaps a seven and a half thousand pound Leica or a 50 pound Lumix slash Leica, <laughs> then mpb.com is the first place to check out. And basically they recirculate hundreds of thousands of pieces of used camera equipment every single year. Now, whenever I'm in the market for a camera or a lens, mpb.com is the first place I'd go. Uh, now you get a six month warranty with every purchase and it's also fantastic for selling your gear as well. It's a super smooth process. You just get a quote online and if you're happy with that quote, then they will book a courier to collect your stuff. It's fantastic, as I say, and I would recommend it regardless of whether I'm buying something very expensive or something much more affordable. So yes, links in the description to mpb.com. They operate in multiple countries, so uh, definitely check them out. And also in the new year, I'm doing something quite exciting with mpb.com, so uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. I'll let you know when, when that happens. Anyway, I'll see you next time when uh, I won't be shooting with a Leica, because this is getting collected tomorrow, which I do feel quite sad about. Not as sad as I would feel if it had image stabilization there. So, I'll see you next time.